All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Um, today, what we're going to take a look at is this uh, jiggle deformer, and it's pretty cool because it can make uh, stuff look like kind of blobby gelatin, or um, you know, just a little gelatinous mass, or something like that. So, here's what we're going to do: uh, we're going to create a, we're going to play around with these controls a little bit. Um, as you can see, the jiggle deformer sort of works in a little bit different way. It's sort of a simple quick animation type thing where it's not good for everything, but if you just need to sort of um, animate a blob and then not worry about it, uh, it just sort of does its thing, then that's cool. Um, so there's not too many properties to work with this, so it's pretty easy to use. Um, what you just have to know are a couple of things to uh, control the gelatinous massiness of it, I guess. So let's get started and take a look at this. Um, right now in this scene, I'm going to do a quick breakdown. Just create a torus, and you can create some text if you want to. I don't know, but I just created a torus. And so size it up, put it on the, the grid like that, and um, there you go. So once you have that, you're ready to start. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the background here. I'm going to come down into my outliner really quick, and we're going to show you basically the I've attached that to the torus but it doesn't really show up up here so what you gotta do is gonna kinda come down here and we're gonna look for the jiggle and it's basically jiggle one so that was what I had assigned to it to begin with to show you the demonstration so I'm just gonna delete that okay so now it's gone away and that's usually where it's gonna show up in the outliner and it has a couple of other um, items that show up with it but we're not worried about those for the moment so so once you get your uh, torus, uh, go ahead and click on that torus and then come up to your create deformers. And what we want to do is just go jiggle deformer. And just leave it, you don't have to go into the options box necessarily, but you can. Um, it just basically gives you a starting stiffness and a damping and a, and a weight that you can use. Under your advanced options, don't worry about those for the moment because we're just working with these. anyway. That's what that's all about. So I'll go ahead and hit a create. Okay, so essentially now I have a um, deformer attached to this. So if I push the play button down here, I've set this animation up for 500, 400 frames. So let's take a look at what happens. Um, since I assigned that deformer, here we go. I'm going to hit play. Well, you'll notice that when you hit play, nothing happens. Um, basically, if it's just a static object and you haven't keyframed any movement in there yet, then uh, then it won't do anything. So let's try this. I keyframed a couple of things here. I just made it move from a little bit from this position back a little bit, and then I rotated this uh, around 360 degrees by the end of the animation. So real simple keyframing. That's all I did. I do have a tutorial on keyframing, so you might want to go back and check that out if you're not used to keyframing. So here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit play, and let's see what happens when I, because of adding those keyframes, you can see where it it uh, brought it into motion. Um, you have to have a little bit of motion applied to this effect. Um, that gives it the, the jiggliness. Uh, it's kind of working off of um, its own solver. It kind of generates its own sort of uh, properties um, and they do have a tendency to, to get out of whack every now and then. So let's take a look at how we can control some of these properties. This is the default starting property for the um, for the, the jiggliness. So let's take a look at those controls. Um, if we come up here into our tab section um, you'll notice that there's a jiggle one or if you happen to be over here in, in this attribute editor, you might want to click on Jiggle One there, and you can see some of the options here too. Um, and you can also keyframe some of this stuff, but not necessarily. Um, let's try this though. Let's go back to our tabs and go into Jiggle One and look at where we are at default settings. Right now, stiffness is is at you know roughly in the middle. Damping is kind of in the middle. Uh, the jiggle weight is at 1, which is sort of in the middle. And then the force along the normal and force along the tangent are all the way up. So just kind of keep an idea that's what we're working with with default for right now. But let's play with stiffness first. You'll notice I'll rewind to the beginning of the animation and I'll see if I can bring stiffness up um, as 
sometimes once the animation starts sometimes you can you can interactively play with these a little bit so I'll bring that stiffness all the way up alright so that gives it a st uh, kind of stiff it's kind of like you know here's it in the middle and then in this last example we'll let it roll through here and I'm gonna set the stiffness all the way down to zero okay so you can see it has a little more elasticity and kind of more snake-like when it's uh, at zero so I'm gonna bring that back up into the middle for now we'll just play with it for in the middle okay so that's basically stiffness it just is kind of like a rubber band it's either a stiffer rubber band or a, a less stiff rubber band I guess okay now watch what happens when we use damping I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, crank the damping all the way up and we'll go ahead and hit play and as you can see damping wants to sort of um, contain um, the motion of this jiggle so basically it's it's really trying to compress it and keep it in so if I bring that damp value all the way down let's take a look at it sometimes you can see where it now has a little bit more leeway it's it it has more flexibility in the outer skin so let's see what happens now okay so you might want to start at the beginning of the animation usually to judge how these things are having an effect so I'm gonna take this damping I'm gonna bring the damping back up into the middle there and um, we'll rewind the animation and see what that looks like come on through here okay so there it, it has kind of a nice just medium feel to it it's not breaking apart or anything we don't want it to bust apart and that can happen I'm going to show you why let's come up here into our jiggle weight I'm going to set this jiggle weight up right now it's in the middle at one let's set it up to two I'm going to rewind back here to the beginning so basically it has double the weight so I'm going to set it at two and you can see where it just busts apart I mean it's way too much weight so it's basically killing itself okay so that weight is generally pretty good right at one um, rarely would you probably be using it uh, you know on two but it could create some special effects so you don't, don't want to overlook that but essentially we don't want it to do that so there we go now as you can see it starts to get even more jelly like I have a little bit of weight applied to that so over time it'll want to start doing stuff like that which may or may not be what you want but that will show you kind of what that weight factor does so we'll just bring this back down to one and one is sort of the the standard middle setting that's the weight it should have so check this out now as we go along the force along the normal is sort of like a force being um, pressure um, being put against the face so these normals would be you know facing out into 3d space probably you know in the, in the direction that they're at so um, the force on the tangent is forces impacting those surfaces along the tangent okay so I'm gonna leave it at one you, you see where it, it does have just a nice smooth flow to it it's um, you know uh, the surfaces generally don't have too much force applied upon them they have a little bit by default but let's play with that now I'm gonna bring this force along the normal instead of having it at one I'm gonna bring that all the way down to zero and take a look at what happens I'm gonna go to the beginning of the animation and as it doesn't even have a chance to to start jiggling it just breaks apart so let's take this force along the normal kind of into the middle there make sure you're at the beginning of the animation hit play and now you can see where it just still wants to, to pull apart in that direction so we're not going to mess with it there let's bring it up almost all the way to in the point nine section and we'll rewind the animation come up here okay you can see it's holding together at this point um, sort of undulating a little bit more um, not too much uh, force is applied along that um, along the um, normal faces so that's kinda cool let's bring it up just a tiny bit more though I don't want it to and that should be good for that one and there it 
it is. You can see it kind of has a nice gelatinous feel. Okay, so that's essentially what's happening with that force along the normal. And remember, you can bring that all the way up, um, you know, that'll keep things from breaking apart. Um, rarely do you need extreme um, forces. Okay, so now let's take a look at the, um, the force on the tangent. The tangent is sort of the uh, the, the center point. You'll, you'll see what I mean here in a second. I'm going to take the um, slider all the way down and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to watch this thing bust apart. So I'll go ahead and hit play on the animation and you can see where it, it just automatically really starts to mess get messed up. So we'll bring it back up into the middle somewhere. Take one more one more look at that and there you go, you see it's still busting apart, so we know we don't want that. Now let's bring this all the way up to where we can start working with it, maybe in the 900s somewhere. We'll replay the animation. It'll go in. Okay, so you can see where it's not busting apart right now, and really more through the center section in a, in a radial pattern is the, the, the tangents sort of being affected. So. Let's bring that up just a little bit more. And we'll watch the watch the last one. So there you go. Um, play around with these. Um, you can mess around with the jiggle deformer on everything. Um, just a, a small note that it's generally very difficult to add jiggle to like a full text like this. Um, it, it takes up a huge computational space and Maya will probably have problems reading a, a, an assignment like that, even though those are a polygon. Um, it's best just to assign the jiggle to various polygons and stuff. So. Anyway, go ahead and play around with that. I uh, hope you learned something and uh, read a book course every day and uh, get jiggy with it. All right, thanks for watching.